Okay, so the key to Lagrangian and the, the place where it really shows its strength is in situations that are constrained in some way. So here's the, the case that I have here. There's like a plane with a block on it. And this plane can, can rotate like that. Okay, so you could imagine it moving at a constant velocity, so theta is some uh, constant function of t or whatever. It doesn't really matter, omega t. Um, or it could, it could jiggle back and forth. Uh, I'm going to do it generically, that just theta is not a constant number, okay? But other than that, I have that block and it can move up and down, it can slide up and down the plane, but it has to stay on the plane and it can't get thrown off, so maybe it's on a track, okay? So the Lagrangian says that if I calculate the kinetic energy minus the potential energy for this in whatever coordinate system I want, uh, whatever generalized coordinates, not even a coordinate system, anyway, then the following, this the, the world line will be that of the principle of least action. And this says that uh, the, the equation of motion will be such that it minimizes the Lagrangian over the time interval. And if you want to minimize a function, then you use the Euler-Lagrange equation, which says the partial of L with respect to one of the variables minus the derivative with respect to time of the partial with respect to the, the velocity of that variable is equal to zero. So let's just do this. The first thing we need to do is to find uh, how many degrees of freedom do we have? So, I mean, how many ways could I, like, set up the situation? Uh, and the answer is just one. Uh, this block can only be at one place. Yes, the plane is moving, okay, but I'm not in control of that. That's some function. So I just need one coordinate to describe where this is, and I'm going to pick this, S, the distance up the plane. So if I know that in time, I know exactly where it is, right? I, I have to know the function of theta, but other than that, I know exactly where it is. So now I can find my kinetic energy and my potential energy. Uh, so I want to say kinetic energy, this has a mass m. I mean, I think that's obvious, right? T is 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared. So x dot is the derivative of the x position with respect to time, and y dot is the derivative of y position with respect to time in Cartesian coordinates. Uh, not in S, right? Because I can't write just S dot. I don't know that really fully describes the kinetic energy. So if I get this in terms of X and Y, and I get X and Y in terms of S, I can figure it out. So let's say if this is my, this is my block, and that's the angle theta, then this would be uh, the adjacent side. So this is going to be cosine theta, and that's sine theta. So I get the following x equals s cosine theta, y equals s sine theta. And yet theta is not constant, but that doesn't matter. That's still true. That's still the relationship between x and s. So now I can take the derivative of x. I can say x dot is going to be equal to the derivative of this with respect to time. So s can change. So I get s dot cosine theta. But theta can change too, so I also have to take the derivative of cosine theta. So I'll say plus s times, actually minus, minus s times sine of theta times theta dot, right? Because I have to take the derivative of cosine theta with respect to time is negative sine theta, and then I have to take the derivative of the inside of that, which is theta, and the derivative of theta is theta dot. So I get that. Now let's do it for y y dot is going to be equal to s dot sine theta plus s cosine theta theta dot and taking the derivative of the sine theta. So now I can write down my kinetic energy term. So t equals one half m. I'm going to put in x dot squared, so I'm just going to square this whole thing. Okay, I have to square this, so let's just do that. It's going to be s dot squared cosine squared theta, and then I'm going to get this times this plus this times this, so I'm going to get two of these. So I'm going to get minus 2 s s dot theta dot cosine theta sine theta, right? So what I had s dot s and a theta dot, I put them all in the front. And then I get this squared, so I get plus s squared theta dot squared sine squared theta. Oh, that's not, that's not closed yet. Now I have to do the y. So y is going to be s dot squared sine squared theta, and then I'm going to get 
plus 2s s dot theta dot cosine theta sine theta yes that cancels and then I'm going to get this which is going to be plus s squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta. Now I can close the parentheses. So if I look, let's cancel some stuff. So this and this cancel. And then over here I have s dot squared cosine squared theta plus s dot squared sine squared theta. If I factor out the s dot squared, I get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. And the same thing's true over here. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So I get one half m s dot squared plus s squared theta dot squared. And now if you're looking at this and saying, well, hey, that's just the, the kinetic energy in polar coordinates. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> and you say, well, hey, you could just do this in polar coordinates. Yes, you could. Um, but this is theta dot um, is the derivative of this function theta, which I don't actually know. Okay. So let's just Let's just leave it like that. It's actually more important. So now I can write down the Lagrangian. L is going to be this. Oh, I need y, U. U is going to be MGY. But Y is equal to this. So it's MGS sine theta. Now I get L equals 1 half M S dot squared plus S squared theta dot squared minus M g s sine theta that's my lagrangian okay so now we're going to we're going to apply the euler lagrange equation so i'm going to i'm going to take the partial of l with respect to s the partial of l with respect to s dot take the derivative and set these two equal to each other okay so let's first do the partial of l with respect to s Okay, so no, here's an S term. So I'm going to get uh, the partial of this respect to S is going to be 2 times that, but I have a 1 half M. So I get M S theta dot squared. That's that term. Now I have this term. I have negative MG sine theta. So the derivative of, of this, the only thing, the partial of this with respect to S, the S just goes to 1. So I get minus MG sine theta. There is minus mgs sine theta, and the s goes to 1. Okay, now the partial of L with respect to s dot. So there's only one s dot term in here. It's right here. So I get uh, 2 over 2 m s dot. So m s dot. Now I can take the derivative of that with respect to, I don't need this anymore, with respect to s dot with respect to t, and I get m s double dot. So this term has to be equal to this term, so I can set them equal, and I get m s double dot equals m s theta dot squared minus m g s, no, m g sine theta. Uh, the masses cancel, so I get s double dot equals s theta dot squared minus mg sine theta. Okay, so let's just first check and let's say theta as a function of t equals theta zero. It's a constant. If theta is a constant function, then this term is going to go theta dot's going to be zero. So I'm going to get s double dot. The acceleration is neg oh that canceled, sorry. Negative g sine theta, which is the acceleration of a block down a plane. Okay, so that's good. Um, if theta as a function of t equals omega t, then theta dot is going to be equal to omega. And so then I get s double dot equals s omega squared minus g sine theta. So this says that uh, the acceleration is has two components, right? This is the centrifugal force pushing it away. Actually, I can move this back to on the other side. I can say S, um, yeah, let's do it that way. That is what it is. This is the component because of the rotation that wants to push it away, and this is the component pulling it down. Um, and you could get 
You could get the balance, so it just perfectly, no, you couldn't. It only balanced for a second. So this would be, you could imagine this thing rotating with the block. It's rotating that way. At, at some instant, these two could be equal, but it wouldn't be equal forever. Um, so that it could stay, uh, have a zero acceleration. I, I think, I think the, in this force, this term wants to push it up and this term wants to push it down. Um, I'm thinking there's some interesting things we could look at here. I wonder if you could uh, start with the plane all the way down like this and then or and with the block in the middle. Do you think I could get the block back down over here on that side? I'm not really sure. Down at the bottom. Because if I, I don't think you, there's anything that would push it that way in the frame of the table. But what I want to do now is take this and model it in Python uh, where I can have any theta function I want. I could have theta where it oscillates back and forth like this or constant theta, and then we can explore the motion of that better. But we have the equation of motion. Uh, we can just solve for it however we want, and that's, that's where I'm going to stop right there.